The Ludlum Model 26-3 is an ergonomic, lightweight instrument which can be used for alpha-beta contamination frisking or for measuring gamma exposure. It features the ability to measure radiation in count rate, exposure rate and dose, and scalar counts. The Model 26-3 utilizes a standard 15 centimeter squared Geiger-Muller pancake detector which can detect alpha, beta, or gamma radiation. It is ruggedized for outdoor use and can resist splashing water. Caution is needed when handling the instrument because of the thin window on the detector. Remove the meter from the case and inspect the instrument. Check for physical damage. Look for cracks, breaks, cleanliness, damage to the display window or loose internal parts, and damage to the exterior of the detector. Check for missing parts like screws, battery cover, and dose equivalent filter. If there is obvious external damage, missing parts, or evidence of internal damage, such as loose parts moving around inside the detector, do not use the meter until any problems are corrected. Check the calibration sticker and ensure that the calibration date is current and that the serial number and response check ranges are readable. The instrument features a large backlit liquid crystal display, or LCD, and a piercing audio warning. A comfortable wrist strap and lanyard are also included for hands-free operation. The unit is operated with two AA alkaline batteries. Note, install fresh batteries before each use. Batteries should be removed after each use to prevent corrosion of internal electronic components. Battery life is approximately 500 hours. A low battery indicator on the LCD warns when less than 16 hours of battery life remain. If the low battery indicator is on, Replace the AA batteries. Grab the ring on the screw and turn the ring one quarter turn counterclockwise. Release and remove the battery cover. Replace the two AA batteries. Firmly insert the barb of the battery cover completely into the body of the Model 26-3. Replace the cover by gently pressing down on the cover and turning the screw one quarter turn clockwise. If the barb is not inserted into the body of the instrument correctly, the barb may break off. Turn the instrument on by pressing the OK button for about a second and then releasing. The instrument should activate all the LCD segments, display the firmware version number, and briefly activate the LED alarm. The instrument will then begin normal operation, displaying the default rate, CPM. Units can be changed by pressing the U button. Observe the device during this time. If any LCD segments are missing or audio fails to work, the device needs to be repaired and should not be used. Before using the instrument, a source check or reference reading should be performed. Use the supplied 1 microcurie cesium-137 check source. Compare the source ID number located on the source to the source label on the side of the detector. They should match. A quick method for performing a response check is to have the detector in rate mode and the units in CPM. Without using the dose equivalent filter, place the detector window over the source and note the count rate. The measurement should be within the range indicated on the label. If the response check label indicates the units as MR per hour, then the response check should be performed as previously described. However, the dose equivalent filter should be in place and the unit should be MR per hour. Note, if your department does not have a radioactive source with calibrated ranges, ensure that the detector responds with increased counts or dose rate when placed over radioactive material. Contact the Ohio Department of Health Radiological Emergency Preparedness Group about acquiring an acceptable check source. After the response check is complete, a background measurement should be taken. A background measurement is a reading of ambient radiation taken away from known sources of radiation and or radiological material. Document the background measurement. We are now ready to use the detector. There are three modes of operation available for the Model 26-3, rate, max, and count. The user should select CPM when not using the dose equivalent filter and MR per hour when using the dose equivalent filter. CPM stands for counts per minute, and MR per hour is millirankin per hour. Both are commonly used radiation units in the United States. 
The 26-3 defaults to CPM when it is turned on and is used to measure radiological contamination. If the operator wishes to measure exposure or dose rate, press the unit button to change the units to MR per hour. If the operator is measuring dose rate, the snap-on dose equivalent filter should be used. If the dose filter is not used, the detector will over-respond to low energy gamma radiation in the 20 to 150 kiloelectrovolt range. If the operator is measuring a radiation field, the dose equivalent filter should be used. The detector should be in a rate mode and units in MR per hour. If the operator is measuring for the presence of radiological contamination, do not use the dose equivalent filter. The detector rate should be in rate mode and the units in CPM. To silence the clicking audio, press the OK button. To turn the clicking audio back on, press the OK button again. One of the most important tasks associated with a radiation emergency is to ensure that you and your partners are not contaminated with radiological material. We can check for contamination by performing a personnel survey. It is a good work practice to follow these steps. Turn on the meter and perform a source check in an area not affected by radiation. Make sure the detector is in CPM mode, the dose equivalent filter is removed, and the potentially contaminated personnel are away from any radioactive sources. Hold the detector as close as possible to the person while avoiding direct contact, approximately one quarter inch away. Start at the top of the head and work downwards starting with the front of the body, then survey the back of the person. Move the detector at a rate of approximately one and a half to two inches per second. Periodically pause when surveying face, neck, hands, and feet to listen for an increase in the audible clicks and pause if one occurs. Document all readings greater than two times background. Another important task associated with a radiation emergency is to ensure that any equipment used is not contaminated with radiological material. We can check for contamination by performing a contamination survey. It is a good work practice to follow these steps. Turn on the meter and perform a source check in an area not affected by radiation. Make sure the detector is in CPM mode, dose equivalent filter is removed, and the potentially contaminated equipment is away from any radioactive sources. Hold the detector as close as possible to the equipment while avoiding direct contact, approximately one quarter inch away. Choose a starting point and move the detector over the equipment at a rate of approximately one and a half to two inches per second. Listen for an increase in the audible clicks and observe the display for higher than background readings. Document all readings greater than two times background. After you have finished using the detector, remove the batteries to prevent corrosion of internal electronic components. For radiation incidents, notify the Ohio Department of Health 24-hour hotline at 614-722-7221. This concludes our introductory training on the operation of the Ludlam 26-3 survey meter. If you have any questions or comments, please contact Mike Birch at michael.birch at odh.ohio.gov, Bill Lohner at william.lohner at odh.ohio.gov, or Jill Slabowski at jill.slabowski at odh.ohio.gov.